Step number two, we don't need it. Step number three, firstly, were you able to get that? That's your heavy word. You able to get that? Yeah? yeah. Take the first derivative. Do the first derivative test. Go for it. By the way, that a whole lot easier taking a derivative of than that, right? Okay. Try that on some of those graphing ones. Right? That's usually going to be something doable for you, at least doable. So try some of that. So take the first derivative. Let's do that together. Uh, everybody, what is the first derivative when I when I do that? <coughs> what was that? What do I do for a first derivative test? If I set that equal to zero, I'm going to get x equals, well, I'll show the work on that if you really want me to. This will be 3x squared equals 3, x squared equals 1, x equals plus or minus the square root of 1. x equals 1 and negative 1. You okay with that so far? Okay. Hey, that's the first derivative test. That's not too bad. Let's do step number four. Step number four is, can you do the second derivative test? Second derivative test says, well, take the second derivative. Go ahead and do that now. Take the second derivative. How much is the second derivative? Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. What do you do with that 6x? When you solve for 0, what are you finding here? You're trying to find possible inflection points. So when you divide by 6, x equals 0. These right here are your critical numbers. This right here is a possible inflection point. Let's recap for just a second before I start making the table for you. And then we'll, we'll do the table next time. How many people feel okay on finding x in the y-intercept? Feel all right with that. Good, that's, that's our basic algebra. Do you feel okay with our first derivative test and our second derivative test? Raise your hand if you feel all right with that. Now, step number five, this is where all your work happens, okay? All your work happens... right here in step five. You're going to have what you got from your first derivative, you're going to have what you got from your second derivative, and you're going to put it, all of it on something that looks almost like a graph. It's a number line. <coughs> what were our critical numbers that we needed? Four or critical plus or minus one. So negative one, positive one, zero goes on the bottom. Why does zero go on the bottom? Okay, so critical numbers, critical numbers went on the top. That was our first derivative. That's what we got, right? Possible inflection points, that's from our second derivative that goes on the bottom of our table. It has to be in order, negative one, zero, one. Do you feel okay with that so far? What do you do now? Start testing numbers on the like one section. So every single interval here, you follow? What number are you going to check here? And where are you going to check it? In the first derivative. What are you going to check here? <coughs> what was it? Negative 1 would work, right? It doesn't matter. Negative 1, you're going to check it in the second derivative. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Fill that table out for next time because that's where I'm going to start next time. If you want to hang out for a second, I'll do it right now, okay? Uh, for this one, if I plug in f prime of negative 2, if I plug in f prime of 0, I can do that. And f prime of 1, I'm doing my first derivative. I'm going to get positive, I'm going to get negative, and I'm going to get positive. That means increasing, decreasing, increasing. You follow me on that? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Second derivative, I'd try f double prime of negative 1, I'd try f double prime of positive 1. Remember, it's just this interval, it doesn't mean you can't plug those in for your second derivative, that's okay. Negative 1 gives you negative concave down. Positive one gives you six. That's positive. Concave up. Show of hands, some people feel okay with their concave down, concave up. That right there is a picture of our graph. We're done with step five. This basically tells you up, down, up. We just have to find some points and we'll graph that next time. Let's finish that problem. We're dealing with basically just a polynomial. Uh, we know that we can take a first derivative pretty easily if we distribute. We've already done that. We found 
first derivative test, second derivative test, we have our intervals of increasing, decreasing, intervals of concav concavity up and down. We also have our relative, which one's this, max or min? Relative max, relative, and good, inflection point. What we don't have is actual points, right? We need the points now. So the steps that we haven't done. After you've done your first and second derivative test, you've made me the table, what I want to see is your, your points. Now, I know the x-intercepts automatically give us some points. Basically, 1, 0, negative 2, 0, those are my x-intercepts. My y-intercept will give me another one, 0, 2. So x-intercept, y-intercept. But then all of my critical numbers, my critical points, like my relative max and min, that's more points. My inflection point, that's another point. So you need to also give me, are you okay on the 1, 0, and the negative 2, 0? So my x-intercepts, my y-intercept is at 0, 2. That's what we, we got those from. We did that last time, right? If you don't remember that, look back at your notes or look at the video. We did that last time. Now, those were x-intercepts, y-intercepts. We also have relative max. We have relative min. And we're going to have an inflection point. Just one in this case. <coughs> Can you please tell me what's the x coordinate for my relative max? The x coordinate for my relative max. Negative one. Negative one would be the x coordinate for my relative max. Can you follow? How did you get the zero? Good, the original one is what gives you points. So to find our points out, you take the negative one, plug it back up into here, or, or this one would probably be a little bit easier, and that will give you out the y value. You follow me? That gives you your, your points. So this is going to be negative one, let's see, negative one plus um, three, two, two. Two. I think so. I don't know. Can you tell me? Plug it in with this Okay. It happens, right? It's all good. What's a little point between friends, huh? <coughs> a moot <mood> point. <laughs> right, right. Okay, negative one plus three plus two, four. Uh, find your relative min. What's the x value for your relative min, please? What is that? So I'm going to put a 1 here. How do I find the y value? Ah, look at it. That one's going to be, that one's 0. Inflection point. Can you please tell me my x coordinate for my inflection point? 0, 0, comma. That's an interesting point, isn't it? Not only is it the y intercept, it's also the inflection point. So we have that point twice, not a big deal. You feel OK with the points? Here's how to label them on your graph. What you're going to do is just work your way down, just like we did with the process. Start with your x-intercepts. 1, 0, put a point. Negative 2, 0, put a point. Those are my x-intercepts. My y-intercept is 0, 2, put a point. Relative max happens at negative 1, 4. Put a point. Relative min happens at 1, 0. Put a point. That's already there. Now, here's how I like to label these points. Are you okay on, the, firstly, the four points that we get? I mean, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have six of them listed, but two, we have two pairs of points. <coughs> here's also what I like to do. When you have the inflection point, you need to label it inflection point. That way you see the change in concavity. So which one of these is inflection point? Well, it was the 0, 2 one. So I'm going to label that inflection point, just IP, just so you know it's IP. For your relative extrema, your relative max and relative min, what I like to do, I like to draw a little dotted line. So for my relative max, which is at one, negative 1, 4, I like to do that. That says I can't go above that. For this one, this, this 1, 0, that I know that was a relative min, right? I'm going to do this. I can't go below that. I know that my graph is going to bounce off of those those dashed lines. Do you follow me on that? 
That's what's going to happen here. It's going to, it's going to, we'll follow in our graph. Go up, bounce off, hit an inflection point, bounce off, and then keep going forever. Does that make sense to you? So label those things with, with something like that. Do the inflection point, change the concavity. Do your relative max, relative min, do little dashed lines. That way you know you're not going to go past that. You're going to be changing at those, those values. So let's see if we can graph our, our graph. If we follow this table and associate them with these points, we should have a pretty good looking graph. It says you're going to start out, you're going to be increasing. Which way is increasing? This way or this way? This one. So we're, we're increasing. How are we increasing? Concave down. Concave down. So increasing, concave down. Increasing, this is concave up, this is concave down. You follow? We're increasing, concave down. It says increasing, concave down. We're going to go through that point. So increasing, concave down. That's going to be hard to draw that way. I tried to do it. Increasing, concave down. Are you following me on this? I'm going to hit that, what it says, a relative max. Increasing, concave down, relative max. Then I start decreasing. How am I decreasing? Look at the board here real quick. How am I decreasing for this interval? It says you're decreasing, but you're doing it concave down. You follow me? So for this little interval right there, it says x equals 0, right? It says from negative infinity to negative 1 on the x-axis, you're increasing concave down. From negative, negative 1 to 0, negative 1 to 0, you're, decre you're decreasing concave down. That's this way. Decreasing concave down. Are you still okay with that? Yes, no. After zero, after zero, it says, I'm still decreasing, but now I'm concave up. That's, that's like this, decreasing concave up. So that was my switch in concavity. I'm still decreasing from zero to one, from zero to one. I'm still decreasing, but I'm concave up. As best you can. After x equals 1, that's why I made the point earlier in the class that you have to follow the x-axis, right? You've got to be on that. So you go, okay, after x equals 1, I'm increasing again, and I'm concave up. Increasing concave up looks like that. That probably should be a little more narrow. But that's the idea. Can you get this graph from this picture of the graph? How many feel okay with that? So follow along the x-axis, start from the left, work your way right, increasing concave down until x equals negative 1. Cool. Right there. We have the point for that. For that little interval, decreasing concave down. Right there. For this next interval, decreasing concave up. Right there. Last interval, 1 from x equals 1 on, increasing concave up, and we have our, we have our picture. Now, of course, it's just an x cubed, so we kind of have a picture of that anyway. But the double root's interesting, right? We were able to find that. We were able to find all these points. That's a pretty accurate graph. Fairly accurate. How many feel just fine with it? All right. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to erase this because it can take us a long time. A lot, of, a lot of board space to do these problems. <coughs> we're going to graph some rational equations. You ready for rational? Rational are harder, first because the derivatives are harder. And second, because you have asymptotes. That's what makes them harder. So I'm going to try to get through two today. We have about 40 minutes, uh, 30 minutes or so, 35 minutes right now. So they, they take a long time. Uh, we're going to try to get through two. Oh, yeah, were there any questions on that? <laughs> now, the question is, do I do that on purpose? <laughs> I'm not going to rewrite the steps because I gave them to you last time. They're on the video if you need to check.